Hey guys, Shantira here, flip2freedom.com. All right, so I asked an Instagram, in an Instagram story, what is your biggest obstacle, biggest frustrations kind of holding you back from getting to the next level in your wholesaling real estate business? So I got, uh, I got a bunch of responses, but a lot of them are around these four items right here. One is building a team. And uh, actually, Juan asked specifically about building a team. Jeff asked about systems. George asked about um, converting more leads. And Tanner asked about tracking. So that all is high-level stuff. When you talk about building a team, the systems it takes to grow, the um, you know converting the leads to reduce... Uh, the amount of leads per contract you have, and then tracking what are the right numbers that you want to track is incredibly important because here's the issue when people get involved in wholesaling. First off, I know when I first got started, I was just winging it. I was just hoping it worked. I was just crossing my fingers. You know, when he heard these stories of people making these big checks of ten, five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar checks, I was like, how could that be possible? How could these guys make those type of checks? You know, when I'm used to making, you know, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, if that, and these guys are making in a month, that's, that's got to be impossible. How could that possibly happen? Um, and then, uh, and then, so I would, I would throw out marketing. I, I didn't have a belief that it could work, and I threw out some postcards. You know, I knocked on some pre foreclosure doors. I put some advertising out, and I crossed my fingers, and I hoped to see if it would work, if actually leads came in and, 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 and I would hope to try to get a deal. And what happens is I found that my income just went up and down just like this. You know, it just, uh, um, it was inconsistent because I would try something. I would try a pre foreclosure list with a certain postcard. And if that didn't work, I jumped to a uh, property tax default, you know, with a, uh, with a letter. And if that didn't work, I'd try, you know, code violations or probate properties and try that try the, for direct mail. And then I would try, you know, bandit signs for a couple of weeks and I get burned out on that because that's uh, not too easy here in Arizona. The dirt is like rock hard here. So, you know, so I try all these different angles and then someone said, okay, well, you can get online and get on Google. And I tried that, it took a long time for me to whole, figure out the whole Google thing. And instead, someone said, why don't you do, you know, newspaper ads or you could do, uh, you know, TV ads or radio ads. And all these different things, you know, uh, when you're first starting, you know, can confuse, it overwhelms, and, and you're literally just throwing darts at a dartboard hoping to actually hit a bullseye, um, and uh, sometimes you do and, and, and sometimes you don't. So there is a systematic process. So here's the thing. When it comes, first off, it all starts with Tanner, and Tanner asked about tracking. And all, that, that's where the premise of everything starts. From the point of tracking, then you can start building into converting more deals because you can't convert more deals unless you track first, right? So let's talk about tracking, and then you get into systems and building a team. Well, you can't build a team and start hiring people unless you know your numbers. So let's talk about the numbers, the tracking that is incredibly important for you to absolutely know to essentially scale your business. And here they are. There is the cost per lead. What does it cost you to generate a lead? Now, not a phone call, a lead. So here's what happens. You know, and this is where the confusion comes in, is that people send out essentially direct mail right? <clears throat> and we use CallRail, callrail.com, and you can create a, a local phone number and you can see all the inbound calls. So every campaign that you do is going to have a different specific phone number so you can track the response. If you throw all your marketing on one phone number, you're not going to know whether uh, one list is working better than another list, whether one mail piece is working better than another mail piece. So, the bottom line is you have to track. You have to be able to know um, what the response is. So there's two different things when it comes to cost per lead. One is the response rate. So you send out a thousand postcards to a pre foreclosure list. You get a response, right? Now the response is everybody that inbound calls. That might be say fifty, right? 
And then out of those 50, you might have 20 actual leads, 20 actual leads of people that want to sell their property, right? So that's your lead. Now, what did it cost for those thousand mailers? <clears throat> Let's say you caught, you bought the list. Let's say it costs, you know, you talk, cost a 40 cents, you know, so 400, let's, let's say it costs <clears throat> 600 bucks. I don't, oh, I, there's my phone right there. <laughs> so it costs 600 bucks and you got, you know, so what happens is all you want to do is divide whatever the cost is divided by the amount of leads. And what that will do is give you a cost per lead. So now you know your number, your cost per lead number, right? Let's call the cost per lead a hundred bucks just to make it easy. Cost a hundred dollars. Well, that'd be only 10 leads. So let's call it, you know, I think it was like $30. Call it $30 on a cost per lead. Now, that is a great cost per lead. You will see across the board right now, especially in highly competitive markets, at a cost per lead of 75 to over $200 to generate a lead, just a lead, right? So you have to know cost per lead. Why do you have to know cost per lead? Because then what that will give you that there's, guess what? You're not gonna be able to pay too much and you send out a letter, if your cost per lead is five or $600, it's gonna be very difficult to convert that uh, cost per lead into uh, revenue and into deals. Okay, so the first thing is tracking. You gotta know the cost per lead. That's the number one KPI, key performance indicator that you must know, tracking, for me tracking, cost per lead. The next is all about conversion, right? And conversion is what, um, what George asked about is converting leads, right? Converting leads. Well, conversion, the number you need to know is how many leads does it take to get a deal? That's conversion, right? The better you get at this business, the, the lower that number is going to be. So instead of one in 25, which is the pretty much the standardized number for someone getting started, one in 25 leads or one in 25 offers um, will get you a contract. So the and, and let, me, let me back up and reference one thing. Every lead that you get, you should be making an offer. And I prefer a written offer because it turns a conversation about someone's property and you're throwing out numbers. Oh yeah, we'll give you 60 grand. It turns that casual conversation into a written legal document, which is a offer, and it turns it into a serious event. It turns a casual conversation about someone's property into a serious event. So I highly recommend every lead that comes in, someone that wants to sell their property, you physically write up an offer and you, if they're out of state, you send it to them. If they're in state, then I highly suggest that you go meet with them. You meet with them, you walk the house, you build rapport, you shake their hand, you look them in the eye, you gain that trust with them and you write that specific offer with them. Now, we can get into leaving the offer and that, that that's a, I mean, there's, there's, we have a nine step seller conversion sequence we go through and, and break down uh, each step. The bottom line when it comes to tracking, when it comes to, and which we're talking about right now is you have to know, are you one in 25 leads to get a deal? Are you one in 10 leads to get a deal? Are you one in three leads to get a deal? You know, um, we were sitting right about one in 24 leads for us to actually get a deal. And then I really looked at, especially when I was going through our KPIs and key performance indicators, and I was really looking at what could I do to, to decrease that number from one in 24 to one in 20 to one in 15 to one in, you know, as low as amount as possible. So what I did was I, I broke down the process that it takes to convert leads. And there's a nine step seller conversion sequence. And I, and I, and I basically <clears throat> looked at that, those nine steps, um, broke them down, and then I taught my sales guys this nine step seller conversion sequence. And I also gave them an iPad presentation. I showed them how to calculate numbers, showed them how to make offers, showed them how to overcome objections, uh, showed them how to understand and calculate repairs correctly. Um, so then they could make strategic offers to sellers, right? So that's, uh, that, that's incredibly important. Um, that's number one. Number two,